Today we're going to talk a little bit about the presence of God. In order to start talking about that, we have to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant may be a familiar concept to you, but, but here's what it looks like. It was made from wood and is overlaid with gold. It, it was very beautiful and had lots of beautiful features. It was topped with cherubim, which are angels, another word for angels. Um, they were sitting on top of the mercy seat, uh, this mercy seat that would be sprinkled with blood after certain sacrifices. Uh, it is uh, surrounded by a, a top that looks like a crown. It has rings on the side with poles that run, run through it so that it can be easily carried from one place to the next. After all this, Ark of the Covenant was around the time that the tabernacle was constructed, which was a tent. It was portable. Um, and inside of this Ark of the Covenant, uh, there were the, the stone tablets of the law. This is the law that God gave to Moses when he was on top of Mount Sinai. In order to understand a little bit about what this Ark of the Covenant was for the people of Israel, uh, we should read from Numbers chapter 10 and see what Moses said as the, the ark began to move. Uh, it's, he said, it says, Whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, O Lord. May your enemies be scattered. May your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. The movement of the ark was the movement of the Lord. This ark symbolized the presence of God among the people. And that became obvious throughout all of the different references to the Ark of the Covenant in the, in the Old Testament. Uh, one example of that was when they, they, the uh, Israelites built a temple. Instead of worshiping the tabernacle, this, this tent, this portable worship space, now Solomon had built a temple. And when they were dedicating the, the temple, uh, he, this, is, this is the account of the dedication here. It says, The priests then brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the Ark and overshadowed the Ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary but not from outside the holy place. And they are still there today. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The glory of the Lord filled the temple when the Ark of the Covenant made its way into the temple because the Ark was the presence of God. Well, this Ark of the Covenant pointed ahead. It pointed ahead to when God would dwell among his people, which we'll be celebrating on Christmas here. Uh, the Christmas Day Gospel text is from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and verse 14. Verse 14 most closely encapsulates this, this presence of God and just what Christmas means um, as a fulfillment of this Old Testament uh, imagery. It says, The Word, the Word meaning Jesus, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. God came to dwell among his people. And he came to dwell among his people. And in the act of dwelling among his people, he would save his people from their sins by living a perfect life and offering that life as a sacrifice for sins on the cross. When, when Jesus came, he did, not, he did not come in judgment. He, he came to save. So that when he comes the second time in judgment, uh, we will be happy to see him and relieved to see him because we will see the face of our Savior, our Savior who gave his life for us. We are thankful that, that God sent his own Son to, to dwell among us, that, that he sent his presence to be here among us so that we would be present with him one day in heaven.